This is Super Yacht News with Yves Sisman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so we've had a lot more information on the awful incident in Baltimore. Uh, we're going to talk about the timeline of what seems to have happened on board based on footage filmed live at the time in AIS data, etc. And discuss a, a question that seems to be coming up. Uh, it, was this an accident or was it deliberate? So the timeline, the vessel left the dock at 0441 hours uh, UTC, which is 12.41 a.m. So uh, local time, which we'll I'll use local time from now on. Now at uh, 1.24 a.m. Uh, local time, the vessel is traveling at a speed of 8.7 knots. The tugboats have already left the vessel. It, was, it did have two tugboats to guide the vessel out of the port. They've already left. As it approaches the key bridge is doing 8.7 knots as we said in the previous video now it's at this point the ship experiences the first blackout 124 a.m edt time so if we look at the video footage from the live stream that was there at the time you can see uh, the time in the top left hand corner um, now the power is restored at 125 hours local time which is just one minute later now, according to the AIS data, this is when the vessel starts to veer off course. At 1.26 a.m., there is a second blackout. A power is restored at 1.27 a.m., you know, less than a minute later. Um, and at approximately 1.28 a.m., the vessel hits the bridge. It's at this point the bridge starts to collapse. So it would seem they were going through a series of blackouts on board, which has contributed to this incident. Now the ship also lowered an anchor into the water. Port side anchor is lowered into the water, uh, which would have been to try to bring the vessel to a stop. This is a, you know, a standard procedure for vessels adrift and the massive vessel would have dragged that anchor along, uh, along the, the, the seabed to, uh, to try to stop it. But obviously it didn't, um, didn't have any effect or didn't have the desired effect. It could be that the dragging anchor could have been contributed to the vessel going off course. Now there's been a lot of talk on a lot of videos about a plume of black smoke coming from the funnel after the first blackout. This is consistent with the engines being restarted. It's normal to get these plumes upon starting engines. Now according to engineers who've worked on ships like these, when the ship blacks out, the engines would have gone offline and everything on board would have had to have been reset. Uh, the generators are giving power to equipment, you know, all the controlling equipment, uh, such as the computers, etc. Now you can see uh, the power when it comes back on. That's uh, the generators back online, which obviously give them power to the lighting. And then a few seconds later, about 10 seconds later, you see the black smoke as the engines are restarted. So a mayday call was made from the ship before the impact, and this had a massive effect on the incidents it could have been much much worse which we'll go into in a little bit hey guys on the north side hold all traffic on the key bridge there's a ship approaching has just lost their steering so until you get that under control we gotta stop all traffic just make sure no one's on the bridge right now now a number of questions have come up based on other videos comments various different places we're not we're just going to go straight into them and, and discuss each one on its merit uh, emergency generators does the ship not have emergency generators well yes this ship would have had an emergency generator or will have an emergency generator they are a requirement and it would be connected to its own emergency switchboard uh, connected in parallel with the main switchboard now, obviously it recognizes if the main switchboard goes offline then it will or, or you know if it, it detects the blackout and it will automatically start up now um, it will also have its own separate fuel supply now the emergency generator is required to come online automatically within 45 seconds of a blackout. Now we've seen from the video footage that it's around a minute for the power to come back on, right? So the emergency generator may have done its job, but they're able to, um, they were able to restart the main generators very quickly. So it probably didn't have any really, any real effect. Now the emergency generator uh, supplies emergency power to the ship, to critical systems and instruments such as watertight door, alarms, communication equipment, steering gear, emergency lighting, and of course, navigation. However, like I said, as we saw in the video, the engineers appear to get the main generators back online 
within a minute. How do I know the main generators are back online? Because of all the lighting that comes on on the exterior of the ship, the emergency generator will only give emergency lighting, which is designed to help crew to you know escape from a ship if it's in trouble. They wouldn't all the spotlights and stuff wouldn't come on with emergency generators. Now the Mayday call. Uh, one report said that uh, depending on how the Mayday was sent, either by VHF using a unit you know on board the ship, which is powered by the ship, or via the pilot's handheld radio may determine if there was a loss, a loss of power. I, I don't subscribe to this. Um, I don't see how that would work because all of the radio equipment on the bridge, the VHF radios, is all connected to a GMDSS system, which has its own 24 volt uh, DC power. Um, any, any, and, and that's the primary power is, is, is the battery. And uh, if the power goes off on the bridge, um, then the radios will be unaffected because they'll already be on the, uh, the 24 volt DC power supply. So even if they did have a blackout on board, the radios would still be functioning. So whether or not they use that radio to call the Mayday is irrelevant, I think. Now, the, if the Mayday was sent, the Mayday would more likely be sent by, you know, there's quite a few people on that bridge. There were two pilots on the bridge, a captain, uh, various helmsmen, various other people. Um, they probably would have delegated the captain or the pilot may have delegated that to somebody on the bridge. Um, and it may be quicker for the pilot to call it in as he would have had um, you know, direct contact with the port authorities. Uh, next question was, why was there no tug support for a vessel of this size? This is a very good question. Uh, there were tugs to help the ship leave the port, but they left before the ship reached the key bridge. Um, why, uh, why, uh, another question which goes on to that is why, was there, why were there no protections for the bridge supports, you know, the stanchions of the bridge? in the water considering that bridge was crossing a very busy shipping lane. I think you can expect to see both of these things addressed in the future. A new bridge will of course have protection for the bridge to prevent reoccurrence and no doubt vessels of this size will require tugboats to transit through this area in the future. Uh, another question that's come up quite a lot in the comments as well, where a lot of people seem to think it's, it's obvious that it's a, a deliberate event. Uh, everything we've seen in the video footage and heard suggests an accident from a Mayday call prior to the accident, the power issues they seem to have on board. Uh, there were also lo two local American pilots on board the ship at the time of the accident. Uh, now, I'm sure the authorities will release audio from the ship's bridge. You know, the Voyage data recorder records the audio on the bridge. Uh, I'm sure they'll release that, which will also help us to understand what was going on on that bridge. Uh, there are no signs or hints of, or proof that uh, it was anything other than an accident. Now, apparently a UK-based cybersecurity firm said it could have been hacked to black out the vessel. Well, well, yes, and they would say that because they're a cybersecurity firm, right? Um, you know, if you ask them what the problem is, they're gonna point to a computer problem, right? Because they work with computers. Uh, the ship's bridge controls are not, the ship's integrated bridge is not connected to the internet. Uh, they are standalone LANs, lo local area networks. They're not connected to the internet. In fact, if you do connect one to the internet, it stops functioning or the software will stop functioning on, on that bridge and the vessel's not going anywhere. You know, so if you try to plug it into the internet, uh, it, it's just not gonna work. The equipment's not gonna work. Now, uh, it could have been a lot worse, right? Uh, the injuries, could have been so much worse. The police stopped the road traffic on the key bridge in less than 30 seconds once they received the Mayday call from the vessel. That's an amazing response time. Uh, you can see uh, the bridge structure also collapsed onto the deck of the ship. And as you can see from this footage here, it's gone through the decks uh, and probably onto the mooring platform. Now there would have been crew in those mooring platforms, possibly would uh, could have been crew in there. You know, they dropped that port anchor uh, which which shows that they were um, there was a crew in there. You can't do it from the bridge. It has to be done locally. So there would have been crew in there in these areas dropping those anchors. So it could have been fatal to the crew on board also. So you know it could have been a lot worse. I know it's it's awful for those. There are currently six people uh, still missing, presumed dead now, um, and it is an awful situation. But it could have been so much worse if they hadn't closed that bridge. I mean, you can see in the footage there's a big truck with a trailer on the back, which crosses over literally a minute before the bridge collapses. And so it could have been so much worse. 
Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching, and uh, and I'll I'll catch up with you soon. Bye bye.